praise the Lord. I bear in my body the marks of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of us here for standing for the gospel, there must be something that you have to show that costs you. Everyone. I'm only saying what is obvious. If truly you have given your life to Christ, every one of us that have taken this decision, we already have such testimonies. And I've said it before. If you have not yet got your testimony, just get ready. Your own must come. No, it is normal. So begin to think. If you are truly a Christian, which cross have you picked? So where is your cross? I'm asking like Thomas. You say you are a follower of Jesus. Yes. They quote one scripture. This sign shall follow them that believe. That is water side. Luke chapter 9. Go. Pick up your cross and follow me. So I will know you are a follower of Christ by the cross you carry. I will also know you are a follower of Christ by the fact that no devil can mess you up. Oh yes, you live a victorious life. In your business, you will prosper. In health, you dwell in divine health. I gave my life to Christ in 1989. I gave my life to Christ. Me, I used to go to hospital almost every week. From that till today, I have not had need to go to hospital. Not had need to go to hospital. And I'm not preaching against hospital, but God has not allowed it. Praise the Lord. I didn't say you should not go to hospital. If I break my leg today, I will go to hospital. But he has not allowed me to break my leg. He has not allowed me to have accident. He has not allowed me to have sickness until I will go and start taking injections somewhere. I'm not going for any lab test to know what is wrong with me. Does it mean I've not been sick? I've been sick. I possess my health. I pray and God always heal me. Until fear catch me. I think last year when I I had to be in India for something. I used the opportunity. I went for a medical test. I said, when I check, make another that, 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 something they grow somewhere. I don't know. They checked me. Everything you seen, they're sophisticated machines. And they saw nothing wrong with me. And early this year, when I was in America, I said, check my eye. This is why they use glass, glass. Whether well, something happened there. So when I speak like this, that is Mark 16, 16. This sign shall follow them that believe. But there is also a cross. Now, Pastor Moses, where is your cross? I get them. 20 years I'm married, I don't get picking. You think carry that kind of cross? Maybe only three, three, three years, you don't want your wife. Your eyes already outside. 20 years and yet people looking for fruit of the wood they will come I will pray for them and they will be healed what is the mark that Apostle Paul said he had I bear me the mark of Christ there are two marks one oh glory be to God praise the Lord praise the Lord Apostle Paul the day he met with Christ that light struck in his eye Second Corinthians chapter 12 read it there he's there that is where he said he cried to God for that is the thing was tormenting until he called it the messenger of Satan sent to buffet him a thorn in his flesh he besought the Lord three times he said I've got to take it away God told him he said hey, my grace is sufficient for you I told him don't bother to pray he said my strength is made perfect in weakness this is your weakness. I use it to perfect myself. To show my, my, my strength. Now listen church. And he remained with that. Ordinary handkerchief. He will throw blind people's eyes will be restored. Then when he go back after that crusade, he's battling with his own sight. That was his cross. And some people here, you minister especially 
Daddy, I don't understand what is happening. I pray for people. God will bless them. They will not remember me. I need deliverance. <laughs> you don't need deliverance. Amen. You are carrying a cross. Don't let any, any of these funny preachers confuse you with that. You are sick. I, I, have, I, I, I have been terribly sick until I could not stand up from the bed. And yet, somebody will be sick. I will lay that same hand on the person. And the person will be healed. Then I will be battling with my own. When I cry, I cry two days after the thing will go. I will say, God, why are you allowing me to suffer this thing like this? Amen. Praise the Lord. I was sharing something with Pastor Francis in my house yesterday. Uh, Nikin Chinedu brought one man two years ago to test. Those people, when they carry machine, they test. Chinedu, you remember the, in my office? Yes. I think they were testing their soul. We are, so they say, ah, our pastor, we needed to, to test his uh, to test his own health. I think there's a machine they use. They will know whether something is wrong with your heart, whether not correct or not correct. The machine, they talk something, sir. And then he came to my office. He said they sent him to come. Chinedu called me. Later on, he joined us. The man put his machine. He said, hold one for this one, this one. The machine refused to move. He said, whether the wire not connect well. He do everything, clean it up, fix it again. He said, hold it. I hold on. Machine. Bah. And Chinedu came. Chinedu, the man don't come now. He's wasting my time. I, did, I was doing something. I do now. I do. I say, you do Chinedu on today? He said, eh. I said, Chinedu, oh yeah, test it again. Chinedu held it. Wow. The machine began to read. Hey, give me now. I hold on. The machine refused. <laughs> there is nothing to read. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Then the man looked at me. He says, sir, why is he doing like this? I say, there is power, jam, power. So there is a reaction. This higher power here. I say, we will lay hand on the sick and the sick shall recover. You can't carry machine. They hold the same hand. There will be confusion. Your machine goes cut out. The man started coming to this church for some time. I don't know whether he still comes here. Does he still come here? He still visit us here. He started worshiping here at that period. He said, you are not an ordinary person. He said, it has never happened before. Praise the Lord. Okay? And despite that one, I go to cry when sickness is worry me. It's my own cross. Now, I bear the marks of Christ. This church Till now, he's still bearing the marks of Christ. See, these are the injuries. Injuries. By his stripes, we are healed. Why did they demolish this church? Only because of Christ. Nothing more. If it was uh, 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 Guru Maharaj or Hindu that has a shrine here, nobody will bother with them. But because these people, they saw in the spirit, they saw the light, they know these are true Christians, they are coming here with light. Darkness was shaking. No other reason. Nobody said we are disturbing them. No disturbance in any way whatsoever. Many people don't even know there is a church at the back here. No other reason other than we are followers of the truth. What of your own? Where is your own mark? Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Now there are two marks that everyone will have to follow. I mean the born again Christians. We have two marks to follow. The first mark, praise the Lord, is the mark you will have. The marks of chastisement. Hebrew chapter 12. Uh, Hebrew chapter 12. From verse 5. This is the way Apostle Paul put it. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son. That's Proverbs chapter 3 verse 11. My son, despite not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faith when thou art rebuked of him. God rebukes his children. When you commit an offense, he rebukes you. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if you be without chastisement, we are of all our partakers. Every one of us are partakers of the chastisement of the Lord. He said, if not, then are you bastards and not sons. He said, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much more um, shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of us of spirits and life? For they, our earthly fathers, verily for a few days chastening us after their own pleasure, but he, our God, for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. So, and when God descends on you, there will be a mark that he will leave there later. He will do it. There are many of us, the things we are suffering is God himself punishing us to bring us back to our senses. And when he does that, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You don't begin to behave as if he has forgotten you. It is his own way of showing you love. Showing you love. And remember he said, all are partakers. All, all are partakers. Apostle Paul says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of our God. So knowing the terror of God will persuade men. Once you have a relationship with God, you have received the Holy Ghost, you cannot act like the unbelievers and go free. You cannot. When I mention something here, some people thought I was laying a curse. I said, no, you must pay. It will never leave you like that. If you are committing sin and nothing is happening to you to check you, I've said it several times, it is only either of two reasons or three reasons. Number one, it is that God's long suffering is patiently believing that one day you will come to your senses and know that what you are doing is wrong. Or He's allowing your cup to fool. So that when you'll be crying, asking for mercy, you won't see it. And the third reason could be because you have no relationship with him. If not, why does he punish others and not punish you? The first thing he does, he will take away his peace from you. Break the edge. Serpent will bite. He will allow that serpent to bite you. Where, where? Call upon him, lie, lie. You are commonizing the grace of God here. A young woman called me yesterday from Kaduna. She may be listening to me now. She said that out of frustration, she had sworn to God. I mean, made a vow. When she was in secondary school, she said over 10 years ago that she will not fornicate, defile herself until the day she gets married. 
He said, but condition pushed her. Even her parents were pushing her because things got very bad. And they forced her to go and get a boyfriend to survive like her other sisters. When she goes, she wants
glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief. Or as an evil doer. Or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. But let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 3. Verse 13. And who is he that will harm you? I love that verse. If you be followers of that which is good. But and if you suffer for righteousness sake. Happy are you. And be not afraid of their terror. Neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. With meekness and fear. Having a good conscience. That whereas they speak evil of you as of evil doers. They may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Verse 17. For it is better. If the will of God be so. That you suffer for well doing. Than for evil doing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hebrew chapter 12. Hebrew chapter 12. If you ever think, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me read Hebrew chapter 11 first. Hebrew chapter 11 first. Ancient landmarks. This Christian journey that we are enjoying here now that has been watered down. The song we sing, give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Verse 36. From verse 36 up to verse 40. It says, he gave example of heroes of faith and then he said, and others. They had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were sown asunder. We are tempted. We are slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And this all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. And when I read this part of the scripture, what comes to my mind is to see the grace of God so much upon us in this age. This does not happen in this part of the world anymore. But I'm telling you, there are believers, Christians,
Christians who are still being killed early this morning. I was telling you there was something I watched. I said, I couldn't allow us to watch. I wanted us to watch it. Our brother there in the IT, Sheila said, ah, he said, no, Kai, he said, Kai said, if, if they watch it, he said, the people will not recover a long time. To see what these people are doing in Iraq. I saw it. Tears were coming out of my eyes. I, I didn't know how I was going to comport myself when I came. It took time for me to get out of that and worship God. For what? Have you, have you, have, have you looked at this abattoir? What they do with animals? That's what they were doing with these people. Line them up. Pack them in trucks. Put some somewhere and we are spraying bullets on them. Then brought some to the bank of a river. One by one, they will hold. Somebody stood there with a pistol. Put your head. They will blow the head. Bah, push her inside the water. Next. Bah, push her inside the water. Next. Bah. Push her inside the water. What is their offense? They are Christians. Nothing more. If you watch the screen now, it will show you what those apostles went to the martyrs standing for this same gospel. And it's the same heaven they went that we are going to. If they can show us, watch something. I can't show you that of Iraq. Just watch those pictures.
sister, our brother. So. These are our brothers. And they are still under grace. So. It's not in another dispensation. It's under dispensation of grace. All that to preserve the gospel. Listen to this song. The writer got inspiration and sang this song. The first one to die for this Holy Ghost plan was John the Baptist. But he died like a man. Then came the Lord Jesus. They crucified him. He told the Spirit will save men from sin. He's dripping with blood. Yes, he's dripping with blood. This Holy Ghost gospel. Is dripping with blood, the blood of disciples who died for the truth. This Holy Ghost gospel is dripping with blood. There was Peter and Paul. And John the Divine, they gave up their lives so this gospel could shine. They mingled their blood like the prophets of old. So the true word of God, good, honest. Be too. Then the stone Stephen he preached against sin. He made them so angry they dashed his head in. But he died in the spirit and gave up the ghost. I went to join others in that life giving hosts. Thy souls under the altar crying how long for the Lord to punish those who've done wrong. But it's going to be more who give their life's blood for this Holy Ghost God gospel and his crimson flow. Oh, he's dripping with blood. Yes, he's dripping with blood. This Holy Ghost God. It's dripping with blood, the blood of disciples who died for the truth. This Holy Ghost gospel is dripping with blood. He shed the green pastures so rich. And so sweet, God leads his dear children along. We are the waters could flow, but the weary ones fit. God leads his dear children along. Some through the waters, some through the flood. 
Some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrows, but God gives us song in the night season and all the day long. Sometimes on the mount where the sun shines so bright, God leads his dear children along. Sometimes in the valley, in the darkest of night, God leads his dear children along. Oh, some through the waters, and some through the flood. Oh, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Oh, some through great sorrows, but God gives us song in the night season and all the day long. Though sorrows befall us and Satan oppose, God leads his dear children. Along through grace, we can conquer, defeat all our foes. God leads his dear children along. Oh, some through the waters and some through the flood. Oh, some through the fire. But all through the blood, some through great sorrows, but God gives us song. Oh, in the night season and all the day long, away from the mire and away from the clay, God leads. Is their children alone? Away up in glory, eternity is day. God leads his their children alone. I say, some through the waters and some through the flood, some through the fire but all through the blood some through great sorrows but God gives us song in the night season and all the day long Father along we Oh, Father, alone we understand why. Oh, cheer up, my brother, leaving the sunshine. Oh, we love. For we will understand it better by and by. Shut up.
Let's bow down our heads. Shall we bow down our head? You bow down your head and talk to God. Somebody bow down your head and talk to God, wherever you are. What we are seeing is the foundation they were laid in the efficient age. And what we are seeing nothing is growing now to maturity in laudation age. If it is the church of Jesus Christ, then we are passing through the same road. Somebody bow down and talk to God. It's happening in Iraq. Who knows whether the red dragon will visit Nigeria. It won't go to denomination. It is you. Because you are preaching what they preached that time and fed those lions. You are preaching what they preached that time and fed the cruel wood they were nailed to. Talk to God. Will you disappoint him? Will you de deny him when such an hour come? Tell him to prepare and equip you. Pray somebody. Pray. 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 Pray, my brother. Pray, my sister. Pray, my brother. Pray, my sister. I tell you, it's a seed they were planting. What do you see in the fission? You must see in the Latin A because he are graduating. That fruit is reproducing itself in this age. That tree planted then, in this age, it reproducing itself. Somebody bow down, come in between you and him, ask him to help you. What brought those songwriters? Which estate they were? Which type of spirit were those songwriters? They made them compose that type of songs. Pray, brother. Pray, sister. In bride assembly, we are not playing religion. I can tell you, this church, a part of the remnant in Ladison Church age. This ministry, we are part of the remnant of this age. So better pray. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Excellent Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your servant that brought forth the word also. Great eternal spirit, you have fed us, O oh God, with the original manna. They were reserved only for the priest. And in our days, you are granted of favor to eat the original manna that the priest eat it in the wilderness because it was called the hidden manna. Eternal Father, may he produce Christ in our life in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, because we are being fed now with the original corn of the land, Father, May it produce Christian maturity. Make us ready. 
Make us not to look back from where we are coming from in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you are you your servant to sow this seed. Don't allow us to labor in vain. Don't allow us to labor in vain. Let nothing choke this seed in our heart, O oh God. Let it germinate. Water it by yourself. Let it germinate and produce Christ and bring us to maturity in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, don't allow us to be forgetful hearers. Cause us to hear and do. Cause us to hear and obey. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, dependable Father. Papa, we know we have no power of our own. We depend on you. You are the one that knows the way. Guide us this week. Lead us this week. Don't allow us to follow the world. Papa, give us power to bring our flesh under subjection. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.